Hello and welcome to this introduction to ability-based emotional intelligence assessment. My name is Billy Byrne from Clinch Lines and I'll be your host for this webinar. Uh, so just to begin a little bit about ourselves at Clinch Lines, uh, we're based in Dublin, Ireland and we're a leading global supplier of innovative psychometric assessments, uh, hoping to support and inspire other coaches, trainers, facilitators and HR professionals. Um, as I said, today is uh, about uh, the Mesquite uh, Emotional Intelligence Assessment Tool. So uh, perhaps a good place to begin would be uh, the very valid question, uh, do we need yet another Emotional Intelligence Assessment Tool? Uh, so it's a valid question. So maybe to begin with, um, we just have a, a little look at emotional intelligence theory. Um, just, this is just one slide, so I won't be keeping you too long on this. Um, so look at, there's really two kind of broad uh, theories that cover uh, emotional intelligence. Um, on the one side, we have a trait model uh, where emotional intelligence is seen as a set of characteristics or traits. Um, a lot of this based on the work of Reuven Baron, the psychologist. Uh, and indeed, the EQI 2.0 or 2.0 that some of you would be quite familiar with is based on this model. So it's the, really the capacity to cope with uh, these emotional and social demands of life. So traits like optimism, emotional self-awareness, emotional self-expression, uh, stress management, these would all be part of that particular model. Uh, in contrast, uh, where we are today is the ability model where emotional intelligence is, is seen as, as a measurable intelligence. Uh, this is based on the work of Meyer, Salovey, and Caruso. Uh, that's the M, the S, and the C in the MSCEIT Mesquite uh, tool. Uh, and indeed, this particular model uh, treats emotions and intelligence as working together, not a, a head versus heart, but, but, but more of the emotions and intelligence working together to help us uh, to make decisions. So uh, let's have a look at what, what we mean when we say emotional intelligence as an ability. What is the, the foundation for this? Uh, well, firstly, emotions contain data. Uh, so emotions bring uh, information that we need to take on board, uh, as well as you know, other rational information, if you want to call that. Um, also, the mesquite, we're looking at it, that measures our ability to interpret and utilize this data. Uh, when we are making decisions. So how do we actually take in emotional information and then use it? So that really comes to the heart of the mesquite, uh, which looks at two areas of emotional intelligence and divides it into experiential and strategic. And even in a sense, this is something which is really worth reflecting on, this division of uh, emotional intelligence into these two broad areas, because that gives us a really strong framework to work within. So the experiential is how we actually take in, how do we experience emotions and take in that information? And then with that information, how do we process it? And then you know, actually leverage that uh, emotions when we are making decisions. So if we take those two broad areas, we, we look at the mesquite model as having four key abilities. Uh, so firstly, emotions, uh, as we said, they contain data and information about us, about other people, the world around us. So can we accurately perceive those uh, as an ability to be actually able to do that? And accurately is, is an important uh, word there. Secondly, um, when we want to use these emotions, you know, how do we use them? Do we have the ability to assist ourselves when we are thinking and making decisions and solving problems? So those are the first two. The third is understanding complex emotions. You know, when sometimes someone says like, you know, I have a feeling about something or this is how I feel. Uh, that's that, you know, that subjective experience of emotions, which could indeed be a couple of emotions, not just a single emotion, but the number of emotions and being able to understand that and also be able to understand maybe how emotions transition over time because you, know, you can actually understand and predict uh, the patterns or maybe the rules that emotions follow and how they progress. Uh, and then fourthly, uh, how we integrate the data and, and, and emotions together uh, to help us uh, to uh, utilize emotional data in our thinking, in our decisions, in our actions, and, and remaining open to those uh, emotions on a continuing basis. So. Perhaps I can invite you to do a simple practical exercise with me uh, to help you to get an experience of the Mesquite model. Uh, 
So if you look on the screen, you'll see there we have uh, a two by two matrix, uh, which has energy low to high on, uh, across the, the, the horizontal, uh, and then feeling unpleasant to pleasant on the zero to 10. And this is just a way of mapping out where our emotions are. Each of the four boxes are color coded, uh, would contain a, a wide range of emotions broadly within those. And they, you know, it's, it's not just a clean boxes, but we're showing to show them for that just for demonstration purposes. So let's start. How do you feel right now? You know, in terms of your energy, and in terms of your feeling, uh, where on a zero to 10 would you be? Are you feeling maybe calm? Is that maybe that green zone where your energy maybe not so high, but not feeling quite pleasant? Uh, or perhaps you are in that more yellow zone where maybe your energy is high uh, and you are also feeling pleasant. Uh, or maybe you're a bit low at the moment uh, and maybe a little unpleasant, so that would be on the blue zone. So. Just have a feeling as to where you think you might be right now. Uh, where would your emotional energy be? And, and also reflect on like what has brought you to that point. So, you know, is it because of something that has just happened in the last little while you've come in to look at this particular webinar and something else has been playing on your mind? Uh, or maybe you're energized by the idea of emotional intelligence itself. You have an idea of what that is, how you feel and what's causing it. Secondly, how do you think this feeling will impact on your, your thinking over the next while? So as we're talking through this model, uh, so for example, if you're in that calm zone, uh, will that maybe help you to be more focused? Uh, if you're in the yellow zone, will you be you know, maybe thinking about uh, and focusing on maybe possibilities and how you might use the mesquite that might aid you in that? Uh, if you're in that blue zone, perhaps you're on the lower end, maybe you're looking at this quite critically thinking of oh, what are the downsides of this and and, and maybe a, a bit dowdy so just understanding what emotion you're feeling and how it might be influencing your current thinking thirdly just think about what might cause your mood to shift uh, during this this webinar so what might cause your emotions to change just doing a bit of a what if we talked earlier about the strategic uh, emotion intelligence. So this is a bit of a what if. And uh, thinking about what might shift your mood, maybe some topics that might come up might move your mood, might increase your energy. Uh, maybe if I don't keep the energy up, well then your energy may fall back as well uh, during it. So just think about things that might cause your mood to shift uh, during the webinar. And then finally, how will you stay attuned? So, you know, I'll invite you, you know, to really tap in. What emotions are you feeling over this short webinar? What comes up for you uh, over that time? So, congratulations, you've actually done, you've looked at all four areas of the Mesquite model. So let's dive in a bit deeper just to see what these four areas are. You've now had an experience of them. So let's see uh, a little bit, a little bit more deeply what we mean by things like firstly perceiving. Uh, so we need to be able to uh, get accurate input about how we feel, have been able to tap into that, accurately identify our own emotions, and also read other people and identify emotions in others. Um, because emotions have uh, information uh, about relationships, about the world around us, uh, that we need to take on board. Um, some of the people say uh, emotions, uh, but they bring news from the world uh, to us. Um, Emotions can also reveal our own view of the world. Uh, so some of our emotions reflect how we are rather than what's actually happening out there. So we, emotions can be you know, caused to, to rise in us. We say even if you listen to music, um, that's something that most, and music itself may not have an emotion in it or a piece of art or, or whatever, uh, but it can cause emotions to arise. And that says more about us, uh, perhaps. That's important to tap into also. So a few questions. And um, for yourself, like, do you think you read people accurately? Uh, and if you do, uh, what's the evidence of this? You know, do you accurately you know, read you know, people's faces and people's gestures? Um, on a broader sense, uh, do you read a room accurately? And this isn't looking at every single person in the room, but can you walk into a meeting and get a sense of like, is this, you know, is everyone, is this energy here? Is it energized? Uh, is it hostile? Uh, is it maybe skeptical? So just getting a sense of reading a room. Uh, and indeed, if you've ever done something like, you know, a lecture with a lot of people uh, together in a room, you can't identify each individual emotion, but you can certainly get a sense of the overall. Uh, and, and finally, in the perceive, do you check in uh, with your own feelings? 
Secondly, then, the second uh, skill and the second ability is that of use, using emotions. So we can actually generate feelings in ourselves. Uh, we can shift our own moods. And a, a very important emotional intelligence skill is being able to match the emotions to the task. So as I said, if you need to, to, to be energized for what you're doing, for example, if you're going to brainstorm with your team, you're looking at high energy and high positivity because this is what you're trying to generate ideas and trying to have the energy up. So how might we be able to generate those feelings in ourselves and shift our mood and our emotions to where we need uh, to be at our best uh, for that. And that may be as simple as getting up, getting, our, you know, getting a bit of exercise, going for a walk or whatever before we go into to one of these brainstorming sessions, uh, reading something uplifting or something energizing, even uh, having the meeting standing up. So these are things we can use to, to, to increase our energy levels and our emotions. Uh, so also our ability to generate the feeling that another person uh, is feeling helps us to connect with them. So if another person, for example, is feeling low, if you can lower your own energy and your own uh, positivity, let's say, you can more, more genuinely and authentically empathize with the other person. So questions we might ask, uh, how well is this emotion serving me right now? Um, so is it really helping me what, what, what I'm trying to do? Um, does it help me with my thinking? Uh, is it going to help me to, to deal with this, uh, or come to a solution in a problem I, I'm working on? And do I need to shift the mood in the room? Say you go into this meeting, you're going to have a brainstorming session, as we said, and you see that the, you know, the energy level isn't there. Maybe a bit of a warm up, something to, to get the energy up uh, would be there and, and increase the positive emotions in the room. So that's use. Um, Next, look at understanding. So this is moving into the strategic uh, emotional in intelligence uh, skill area. So this is understanding how emotions develop, blend, and change. So basically blending where, you know, we often have a mix of emotions and be able to understand how emotions can blend. So you might have, you know, a slight nervousness, but also a bit of excitement, uh, for example, again, looking at something like a meeting. Um, and be able to predict also how others might react to events in advance. Uh, you can some some people call this strategic empathy. So thinking about a meeting in advance and wondering and, and doing a what if scenario as to well, how will this person react or how will my team react to this? Uh, having a rich uh, emotional vocabulary and developing that over time, shades of differences between you know emotions which are very alike, but subtle differences between them and being able to distinguish those nuances. So two questions that could come up in practice would be, how can I pair, prepare well for a difficult feedback conversation? And thinking about the other person, doing that what if scenario, that analysis, you know, so that will help me to nuance my language and connect in with that person when I meet them. What outcome, what emotion am I trying to generate maybe in this other person? Uh, and then we'll, for example, if you're doing something, announcing a piece of news to your team, uh, what would be the reaction? Like, what do I expect the reaction to be? And how can I try to get the reaction that I'm, I'm looking for? So those are things in understanding emotions, a, a very important leadership skill, obviously. Uh, and then finally, manage. Uh, I like the, the symbol, the, the, um, the graphic there just shows a tap. How can we regulate emotions? Because emotions will, will arrive at us sometimes unexpectedly. And uh, some of them can be difficult to handle. Uh, something may be triggered and we need to be able to manage our emotions in the moment and modulate them in ourselves and also in others. So this part then is integrating emotions and let's say logic or rational thinking uh, to help us to make decisions. Um, it can also help us to build trust in relationships. A couple of questions here. What emotions do I pay attention to? Are there emotions that maybe I pay more attention to and others that maybe I try to even block out a little bit uh, and be aware of that? How do I ensure that I stay open to emotional information as it comes? So I'm going in expecting emotional information and being really tuned into it and picking up and not just reading the room, for example, when I walk in, but really you know, listening in and feeling what's happening in the room uh, during a meeting, for example. And how do I select uh, appropriate emotional strategies, really thinking in advance as to what it is I'm trying to do. So, go back again, looking at our four abilities, accurately perceiving, using emotions, understanding the complex uh, emotions and transitions, and integrating and managing emotions uh, in order to, to come up with good decision making and good problem solving. So that is our mesquite model. Just know the practicalities of someone who's going to take the mesquite. It's an online 
test, uh, there are eight tasks. Uh, and within those tasks, there are particular items. And there's, you know, in total, there are 141 items that are done. Uh, people who do the mosquitoes will say, oh, some of that was unusual. Uh, and that's good because it's, it isn't like a, a preference test. It isn't asking you how do you feel about something. It, it's actually a test. You are, for example, looking at images and there is a right and, or a wrong answer. So it is an actually ability test. Um, and there's quite a lot of uses, obviously, for the mosquitoes. Here are just some of them. Uh, my own interest is in particularly the area of executive coaching and leadership development, uh, where there can be some really rich information uh, from the mosquitoes. Uh, and people can either develop emotional intelligence skills and where there's, you know, maybe for some people, some areas might be quite a big stretch. They can also uh, adapt uh, and adopt, I should say, um, compensatory strategies. Uh, once they know there are areas that they are less skilled uh, than they would like to be, and uh, as, as well as developing the skill, I say coming up with compensating strategies can be as effective. And that's where coaching comes in. It's a great co coaching tool to work with leaders. Um, specifically, by the way, if you want, if you have people who maybe are low in emotional self-awareness, um, which can be a bit of a difficulty in the trait model where someone is, is, is not so self-aware, um, in the mosquito, uh, you know, you're likely to get quite accurate results and the person may get quite a surprise, actually. And that has to be managed as well if you're a coach uh, or, or um, someone working with the mosquito. So, uh, just in summary, just uh, the Mesquite, uh, we are holding certification programs this May uh, 26th and 27th, um, two day certification program. If you want any more information, please email us or call us uh, about this and we'll be more than happy to, to talk to you uh, about the Mesquite. Our contact details are there. Other than that, thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed that introduction.